Hi, my name is Danny. Welcome to this edition of DNA Dialogue. Today I'm joined by well-known celebrity and media personality, Zuleda Jardine. Zuleda, welcome. Thank you. I'm so happy to be here. Zuleda contacted us a few months ago. She's somebody who puts a large emphasis on health and wellness and doing the best that she can for her body and contacted a analysis to do her DNA tests. And today we want to hear a little bit about how that went and how you found the experience. Well, thank you. Yes, I, I'm not too sure if it's an age thing, but um, I find that the older I get, the more connected I'm becoming towards my body and my mind and my being. And um, I heard about this testing through my psychologist. And it just made so much sense to me because we, we, we live in a society and a world where we tend to treat people with a one-size-fits-all. And as I get to know more about um, my body and my mind, I'm getting to see that that actually... It can't be possible. I mean, the, the way the medical fraternity works just cannot be possible. We cannot fix people with one diet or one type of medication or one type of mindset. So, um, yeah, I'm, I was very excited to find you and um, uh, to find that you were so open and flexible and affable in terms of all of this. And I'm very happy to be a part of your family. It's great to have you as part of the family. Thank you. So, if you had to describe what you happy to share with us one change that you've made or one thing that stood out from the report that you've implemented as a change to your, your diet or your lifestyle? What, what, did that what be? would that be? Um, okay, so I don't know about one thing. Can I have more than one? Sure. Okay, <laughs> thank you. So I, had, I was fortunate enough to do um, DNA mind, DNA sport, uh, DNA skin and DNA health. health yes. And um, I've learned a lot about myself with all of those testing. Um, where would I start? Gosh, um, I think I would have to say probably nutrition. I'm, I'm fascinated by, is it nutrigenomics? Yes. Okay. <laughs> I'm fascinated by that, the scientific study of how your genes interact with nutrition. It's not something that actually dropped for me before. That, um, because I've, I'd always been someone that could eat whatever I wanted and never put on weight. Um, and then all of a sudden I turned 40 and things started changing. Um, and then once again, it still didn't drop for me, like, what's going on here? Because I, for my entire life, I was able to eat what I wanted and to exercise how I wanted. And with these testings, I've realized that there's a certain type of diet that basically connects and resonates with me and my genes. And there's a certain type of exercise that resonates with me and my body type. That's just the, the, the sport and, and the nutrition, for example. When it comes to the mind... I'm also a um, psychology student and one of the things that I tried when I was at varsity to help me concentrate was I tried Ritalin and Ritalin did not work for me at all and I couldn't quite understand why it was ha you know, assisting all my other peers but not me and then through my testing I found out that I've got extremely high levels of dopamine and so the Ritalin wasn't quite connecting with me but now I know. So gosh Danny I can go on and on and on but the bottom line is that I'm, I'm so grateful and I also speak, um, I speak from a place of due respect because I know that this kind of uh, testing is not affordable to everyone so, so I say this with a lot of respect but if this is something that you can gift yourself with and I say gift because it's so easy to gift yourself with a new pair of sneakers or a handbag or a pair of shoes or even a holiday, a holiday is good but your health there's no bigger gift you can give yourself than unique, acute knowledge about what works for you and only you. And so um, this has been a really big gift to myself from you guys. So thank you. Very much a pleasure. And I think that, that sums up personalized medicine and the power of a genetic test. Yeah. It is, you do it once, you have the information that, that stays with you for the rest of your life. And it becomes very much empowering in the sense that you can then take more responsibility for your own health and your own diet and lifestyle and, and your health outcomes. Absolutely. I mean, we, um, there's no doubt that we live in the information age and it's, uh, you, we have access to information so easily. It's so easy to go onto the internet and to Google um, anything. You know, I've put on eight kilograms, what do I do? And Google's going to give you the answer which is a one size fits all. And you're going to try that and, and it's not going to work for you. But when you do this, it's something that's just for you and it's going to work. That's what I appreciate about this most. Another thing I'd like to say is that, you know they say, is it, is it that knowledge is power or information is power or something like that? But if you're not 
if you're not um, actually actioning that out, it doesn't really mean anything. So we do live in a day and age where we have access to a lot of knowledge and a lot of information. But if you're not using it for you, then it doesn't really matter. And what's, what's been a great download for me with my testing is that I've become so mindful of so, for example, a, an obesity gene was picked up with me, and I was like, what are you talking about? There's no way I'm going to be fat. But my mom passed away, and my mom was quite big when she passed away. And, and I realized, because I put on 8 kilograms in the last four years, and I didn't quite know where that came from, now I realize that I have a tendency to snack. And if I put on 8 kilograms over four years, you times that by another 10 or 5, I'm going to land up obese. And so now I have so much mindfulness that, um, that is sitting and swirling and swimming inside of me when I eat. So I may still, you know, go and reach out for the thing that I shouldn't be eating, but I have a mindfulness now which I didn't have before, which is, which is what this testing is all about. It, 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 um, it almost is the, the little angel on your shoulder that says, no, 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 don't go there. Don't touch that medication, or don't do this kind of exercise because it's not going to work for you, or don't put that in your mouth because long term it's not going to be good for you. And it's just that much more motivation to change behavior when you see the information in a genetic report as compared to being told by your peers or by your dietitian what um, we all know what we should be doing. Yeah. But getting people to adopt the healthy changes Absolutely. is often not that easy. Absolutely. So I, um, my mom passed away of a stroke, and my dad died quite young of a heart attack. And so I, swimming inside of me, I have this genetic predispositions of heart attack and stroke, and my mom's whole family, her entire family, um, was diabetic. So I have a lot of predispositions, but as you guys say, um, what is it, um, genes are the gun, and lifestyle, your environment is the trigger, and so I know that I could easily go down that route, but because I have the awareness, and I'm, 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 I'm mindful about the triggers in my environment, I'm hopefully not going to land up like my mom or dad and I'm hopefully going to live a really long life because of that. Yeah. Zuleida, thank you so much thank for joining you. us on DNA Dialogue and uh, it's always great to get feedback from people who've done the test and hear the, the experiences that they've gone through and we're going to be bringing you more of these conversations as we go.